I talk about the beta glucans because I think that's part of, I mean, so mushrooms are a nutritional powerhouse, but there's kale is a nutritional powerhouse, not as much as mushrooms, but they have powerful things and broccoli does. And there are those that love eggs. So I'm still on the, the magic, like there's the immune stories about mushrooms are in, impressive. Um, there was a story by Paul Stamets who, um, about his mother who had stage four breast cancer and got, was given chemotherapy, but was also, basically they said, good luck with it, go get your life in order. And then she was given, was it lion's tail? Um, I forget now which, whether it was lion's tail or turkey, or turkey tail or lion's mane, one of those mushrooms. Turkey tail. Turkey tail, in addition to her chemotherapy. And That's she was like 88 years old at the time, 87 or 89. And years later, she's still alive and she's totally cancer free. So what's happening in those stories? Well, all mushrooms, uh, with, and I have to use Rishi as a, as a good example. Rishi has more of the beta glucans in it. Beta glucans are sugar polymers. In other words, long chains of glucose molecules attached in a certain way so that when we ingest them, and even shiitake has them. So all mushrooms have beta glucans. And when we ingest them, our body immediately recognizes them as a fungal source of polymers. So we've ingested fungi, our immune system through ancient receptor sites that have that uh, have recognition sites are going to know that this is a fungi uh, based on these beta glucans. And they are going to uh, start this amazingly complex and beautiful response. So it modulates many aspects of our immune system, including helping our body uh, T cells to, to our body to make more T cells to recognize uh, antigen like uh, viruses and potential pathogens, learn to recognize those faster and hold the memory longer. So there, there's just an amazingly complex and beautiful thing that happens when we ingest these beta glucans. But the bottom line is our immune system is going to be more vigilant and more able to deal with viruses, uh, bacteria, and other infections, maybe even prevent it from happening in the first place. That's why I take Rishi pretty much every day, especially during the winter. I will ingest um, Rishi mushroom powder. You have to heat it first. So most mushrooms should be cooked or heated to break down the cell wall so that our body can recognize these beta glucans and start reacting in our immune response. So I, every morning I typically use reishi mushroom, especially in the winter, in order to keep my immune system vigilant. And I'm happy to say that I haven't, since I've been incorporating reishi, I haven't really had a cold or flu or anything. It just really is amazing how, how potent and how effective they are. All right, and the question of course, hanging out there when you wanna talk about antiviral, antibacterial properties, of reishi or other mushrooms is COVID. I can't, I was gonna talk about it later, let's talk about it now. So would that include COVID prevention and or treatment? Has that, has, I haven't heard about that. I've heard about a lot of stuff, heard about um, you know vitamins and minerals and things like that, but I have not heard specifically about use of mushrooms. Yes, there's, it seems like there's, it actual, should be. there's actual clinical research on vitamin D for instance, but yes. Uh, and some herbs, there are a few herbs that have been tested in vitro. That means that they make an herb extract and they, they expose uh, coronavirus to it. And then coronavirus fails to reproduce or it ha has a harder time attaching to cells in vitro in a test tube. However, there are no clinical trials showing that reishi or other medicinal mushrooms are going to block coronavirus from replicating uh, there's, there's no clinical trials, but, but uh, I will say that, of course, it, it makes sense that the stronger your, our immune system is, mm -hmm. the better outcomes we're going to get and the less likely we are to become infected. That, that goes without saying, but clinical trials are lacking at this point. So However, what other viral infections in general, you were talking about you take Rishi prophylactically during the winter so that you avoid getting sick. Do you ever take it, I'll call it treatment, when you start getting if you get a scratchy throat or something, do you double up on your reishi? Um, well, I double down. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, like, but I mean, do you use it yeah, as, well as treatment down. as well as prevention? Yes, oh yeah, for prevention, I use a, a moderate dose, which to me is about 
maybe a half a teaspoon, three quarters a teaspoon of the processed powder. So it's already been heated and broken down into a very fine particles so that we can, our body can really utilize that and take it up and start mounting an immune response. If I start getting a scratchy throat or a cough or something like that, then I'm going to use a teaspoon or maybe even two teaspoons of the powder per day, one in the morning and one in the evening. That's powerful. And I only use that during symptoms. Then I go back to a maintenance dose, which is- Got it. Okay, and is there habit. anyone, well, again, we'll talk about supplementing and consuming and stuff later on, but as long as we're on the topic, is there anyone that um, should not or need, do they need to double check with the doctor be taking, before taking any of this, whether they've got allergies, whether they've got anything else that they you know, might be sensitive to, I'm gonna call it heating up their immune system? Anyone with autoimmune? Well, I've had this question a lot through the years in teaching mushroom classes. I'm alert, I, I tend to be allergic to yeast and I have, I'm just an, a person that, that is sensitive to different types of food. Should, can I eat mushrooms? And I, over the years in my clinical practice, I, have, I really have rarely seen anybody react to reishi or turkey tail and so forth. It's possible, yes. I mean, very rarely. Mm -hmm. I think if you're starting out with a mushroom powder, you can start with a low dose, like a quarter teaspoon, maybe take that for a couple of days just to see how you're going to react and then boost it up to a half teaspoon or three quarters of a teaspoon per day uh, for maintenance. But I've rarely seen any actual reactions against uh, the higher fungi like reishi and shiitake and so forth. 